Russia invades. Ukraine fights back. And the world holds its breath. The war in Ukraine daily brings you the latest developments. And the personal accounts of Ukrainians fighting for their survival. What is Putin's next move? How far will he go? How will other countries deal with the refugee crisis as millions flee Ukraine? Will Russia do the unthinkable and go nuclear? Is there a way out of this 21st century nightmare? I'm Charles Feldman. And I'm Mike Simpson inviting you to listen to the war in Ukraine daily on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Breaking news brought to you by DuckDuckGo. Protect your privacy online for free with DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo, privacy simplified. All right, breaking news in the NFL. And I guess it affects the Texans in that they'll now face this guy a couple times a year for the next couple of years. Uh, Five-time Pro Bowl cornerback and 2019 Defensive Player of the Year, Stephon Gilmore. Reached agreement on a two-year deal, Seth, with da, 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 the Indianapolis Colts, per a source. Adam Schefter just tweeted that. Adam Schefter of ESPN.com. So, Stephon Gilmore, that had been um, – his meeting with the Colts had been reported this week earlier. Um, so, the uh, the Colts, uh, they get better defensively today. And I think, uh, you know, it does make you wonder, okay, not that Matt Ryan is – all that in a bag of chips or anything like that, but would Stefan Gilmore be going to Indianapolis if Carson Wentz were still the quarterback? You know, Stefan Gilmore is in that, I think he's in that category of veteran now that probably is looking for the best chance to go win a ring, you know, go chase yeah. a title. Um, and the Colts, I think, feel better about their chances of doing that than, than with, uh, than with uh, Carson Wentz. Stefan Gilmore has always intrigued me, um, not just because of his heavenly coverage ability but because uh if you had to tell me like if you put if you put 200 nfl players in a room and said hey pick one of these guys is actually jesus pick him out uh i think stefan gilmore would be the one i'd most say looks like jesus doesn't he because of his the the length of his hair well, he's got long hair, but then he also kind of has like a little beard. He's got the, his eyes kind of have like a yeah. peaceful, forgiving quality to them. Yeah, he's got yeah. a very symmetrical face. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, so I'm not even talking about like the typical, like, uh, you know, the, like uh, artist rendition of Jesus or whoever he looks like, uh, whether he's black, white, anything else. There's something, uh, there's something uh, like downright holy about his face. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. So I, I feel like that's a good reason to sign him as any. I always thought it was Charlie Whitehurst who was actually named Clipboard Jesus back in the day, but I'll take yeah. Stephon Gilmore. Because you know? he kind of had a, a sandal-wearing vibe to him, too. He had, like, he had long hair. It's, a, it's about the, the vibe as much as anything. Yeah. This is what it helps to be. To be, to be dis, to, for people to describe you as a Jesus of some sort yeah. physically, mm-hmm. you've either got to have a face like Stefan Gilmore's, okay. which it's almost like, it's all, like he's got these peaceful, forgiving eyes yeah. and like a face that's almost too, uh, too symmetrical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, and, uh, or Charlie Whitehurst has kind of like a, uh, a peaceful hippie vibe yes. that looks like he'd be wearing sandals playing an acoustic guitar or, or whatever the instrument of choice was back in the year, you know, 80, he, he was doing his thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. back. Oh, back when, yeah. Back I, when I don't know. Jesus or something like that. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Um, so, uh, so Stefan Gilmore is now an Indianapolis Colt. Congrats to Greg and Galveston making the trip up from Galveston to the whiskey talk, the, uh, yellow rose distillery next Thursday. So we're excited to see you, Greg next chance to win admission to that will be, between 9.45 and the end of the show, when they, the guys on In the Loop will be in with us here. We'll, we'll chat with them about Landry's poll that he put up earlier. He's getting a lot of run on athletes that used to be in Houston that we do not want to win championships. Um, so, sorry, I got us off on the uh, – <laughs> well, I got us off on this uh, the, the Stefan Gilmore, it looks like Jesus tangent. But uh, as far as Stefan Gilmore, the actual football player – Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is – um, the Stephon Gil, it's he's a he's a tough nut to crack because uh, he was defensive player of the year just a couple of years ago, and now as it happens with cornerbacks, it seems like they go from dominance to uh, not the tank or anything. Stephon Gilmore is still really really good, but two or three years ago, a team even at his age, a team would have said, "Yeah, give him all the money for a league. Give him a three year deal with all the money." And where now I think he's just lost enough of a step that he's still very good, but people don't look at him as a guy that's going to transform your team necessarily. Um, but he's still, I think he's still a really good player. So this is, 
if this were a year where the Texans were looking to maybe really take that next step, I would be distraught over this. I'd be like, ah, damn it, the rich get richer. Yeah. Here they go. The, the Colts, now they got Matt Ryan, who's he's not the best thing in the world, but they'll probably figure out a way to make it work. But they do have Stephon Gilmore, who at the very least, you know what, it would be good for Davis Mills to cut his teeth against a guy like uh, Stephon Gilmore. That's that's a really to, – to localize that story, you just nailed it, which is – the fact that I'm not moved emotionally all that much by this story, that I'm not yeah. pounding my fist, like you know, like you just said, that you're not, oh, crap. Um, it tells you about where the Texans are in their life cycle right now. The, the hope is we get back to the days where we actually care about the Colts thieving this guy from the rest of the league and having to go against him twice a year, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah it'd be nice that someday, it'd be, nice, it'd be nice someday, instead of when you find out that Stefan Gilmore is a free agent, instead of saying, like, ah, the Texans aren't in a market for him, uh, someday we can maybe turn our nose up at Stefan Gilmore. That's right. And say, ah, you know what? I don't know. We got a bunch of bright young quarterbacks on this team. Do we really want to, we want to cut them off with the knees and their right. development by bringing in Stefan Gilmore? Right. We don't need them. Yeah. I want to get to that spot. Yes, Sean. yes. Oh, Stefan, no, we're good. Sauce Gardner. Ever heard of him? That kind of. Thing, I want right? to be. I want to be like the elite prep school that won't so won't let Sylvester Stallone through the gates in his um in his big rig because he's not good enough for us. Exactly. It's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. What was um, the name of that movie? Oh, uh, was that Over the Top? Yeah, Over the Top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so Baker Mayfield. We talked about Kyler Murray this morning. The other former number one overall pick out of Oklahoma who won a Heisman Trophy is Baker Mayfield. He's having drama of his own with his team. He will not be a Cleveland Brown, it would appear, in 2022. Um, Baker Mayfield was asked on the, um, the oh, damn, the name of the podcast. I'll find it while we're playing the cut. Uh, but Baker Mayfield was asked on a soon-to-be-named podcast, uh, where do you want to play next? Where do you think you're going to play next? Where do you uh, Where do you think you're going to – do you have any idea where you're going to land? Oh, man. If this would have been about a week and a half ago, I would have said Indianapolis. Um, Seattle, I mean, probably be the most likely option. Mm-hmm. But and, no you, and where you're sitting, you don't give a f- I just I'm ready for the next chapter. All right, so that was Baker Mayfield. So he mentioned Seattle. He mentioned it would have been – you know, he was thinking it might be Indianapolis. They opted to go with Matt Ryan for a third-round pick. I think they – they made a good choice there. It was the You Never yeah. know, You Never Know podcast, is what that was. Who is that guy? A guy named Mike. It just says the You Never Know podcast uh, by I, Mike. Yeah, I yeah I thought it was. I, I thought it must have been uh, like a former retired player or something for Baker to show. Maybe a former Oklahoma player. Or something maybe maybe. Like yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I think that uh, this is the problem with this is the problem with Baker Mayfield and where earlier you had said that you think he's going to be a backup somewhere yes. this year. Ah, boy, he does not have back. He does not have peaceful backup quarterback vibes to him. <laughs> like, I, and, I, and I have, I, a, I, I, have a, I have specific scenarios, but continue with your choice with your with your, with your thought. I would just, I'd be, I'd be real nervous about bringing him in as a backup because he's a guy who, as um, this article, this writer uh, Lloyd in the Athletic wrote, like Baker is a guy who con- consistently, from college onward, uh, makes it his business to feel disrespected. Mm-hmm. It's always, it's always somebody else's fault, isn't it? So I'm going to transfer. I'm going to, I'm going to no, and now it's oh no, no, it's Hugh Jackson's fault or it's this guy's fault. Oh, the cops are tackling me. I'm going to scream. Uh, Baker's always got something to gripe about and that's not the ideal backup quarterback he you, no you're right and there would I'm sure there'd be teams that would be nervous about things that you're saying I guess I'm coming at this from from a Baker standpoint we should point out by the way Seattle signed Geno Smith yesterday so they've got Geno Smith they got Drew Locke not that any of these guys are world beaters but they're filling up their depth chart right now in Seattle like they're they're actually going and getting other quarterbacks not named Baker Mayfield I'm I'm coming at it from Baker's standpoint. Seth is there's a good chance the musical chairs all get filled up when it comes to yeah. starting quarterbacks in the league. We're, we're, he's running out of teams that need a starting quarterback. So if I'm Baker, I got to look at this and evaluate myself. And I think you look at it almost like you're being drafted all over again. And I've always said, and I know you've thought this too, like it's if you're a quarterback, it's better to be drafted by a good team back of the first round than be drafted by a bad team at the top of the first round for your development usually. And I think that's how Baker needs to look at it. And I think a teams like, not teams that have an established starter who's still kind of in Baker's age group, like Trubisky going to Buffalo to play with Josh Allen. Like, not that. I'm talking about going to, I have three teams in mind. Tampa Bay, the Rams, or the Denver Broncos. 
uh, T- Tampa Bay to go get some of that Brady pixie dust sprinkled on him yeah. that other backups have benefited from. The Rams, you're there with Sean McVay and Matt Stafford and a team that just won a Super Bowl and that's going to keep Baker accountable and make sure that you're, you're backup. You're not going to be a distraction. Or Denver, and you back up Russell Wilson. You're there with Nathaniel Hackett. These are all good teams. You got a chance to go be on a winning team. Observe, most importantly, observe guys who say what you will about the personality of Russell Wilson or whatever issue, if people have issues with Stafford or Brady, whatever. These are guys who have been in the league a long, long time, experienced success, experienced ups and downs, and that Baker could benefit from just being around for a season. I think that all three of those are excellent ideas. Uh, those are those are those are bang up ideas, Sean. I feel, thing that feel like there's a butt at. coming here. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, they're all really good ideas. And I was actually, I was struggling to think, okay, which one actually would be worse? Um, this is what I would worry about. I would worry about uh, Baker, Baker's disdain for Russell Wilson himself. Yeah. And also perhaps the, the bad boy appeal of Baker would create a little bit more of a potential locker room situation than you would want. Yeah. That I, and I also think Russell Wilson, of those three quarterbacks that you just mentioned, I feel like Russell Wilson's the one that still has the most football to play ahead of him and might might legitimately and understandably feel a little bit threatened by having Baker Mayfield there. Okay. So, like, I, like, I'm not actually trying to throw shade at Russell Wilson um, other than just in fun. I don't, I don't think that that's the right dynamic in Denver. I think that that, that actually could be perceived as – a threat or just like not like the honeymoon that you want. Tampa makes a lot of sense. I think that yes, Stafford's a good quarterback. Um, but, but he's not as obviously as good as Tom Brady. Right. And if you want to learn how Tom Brady prepares, learn some lessons from Tom Brady. And it's not that Tom Brady needs to be your chaperone or anything or your tutor, but you're going to sit there and that's something you can sell to other coaches. Absolutely. When it comes time to, you know, talk about how you've changed. Maybe go ahead and show a little bit of humility at some point, Baker. Talk about how, like, oh, I didn't realize exactly. Because, by the way, yeah, remember I had four different head coaches in four years mm-hmm. there. Um, Greg Williams was my coach at one point on an interim basis. The only thing I would worry about in Tampa is the – is there uh, is, is is there any possible way that Mike Evans being there – no, 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 no. Okay. I think that – yeah, no, there's almost no downside to Tampa. Yeah, and they there's need a backup. No, he, Baker's better than Blaine Gabbard. That's the other thing. From the yeah. standpoint of those teams, those are older quarterbacks. Like, Baker, there is an upside to Baker that if any of these guys get hurt, he can go in and win football games on these teams. Yeah, I think I think he's got to go to Tampa. He's got to say, hey, I'll take minimum and I'll go to Tampa. Yeah. And then also, he's got the best shot there, too. If I think, uh, who's going to retire first, Stafford or Brady? Like, I, I think... I think Brady. I don't he did just like, retire a like few I, months ago. I, like I, I literally, I don't know. Like it's fifty. Like Brady might play till he's fifty. I don't know. I feel like Stafford's the guy that most Stafford. Stafford is the guy who most looks like the guy that uh, could be cool with just one championship. Like, ah, it was a good run. I, I can see, right. but I can see Brady like. leaving and going somewhere else. You know, like yeah. I, Brady might not retire, but he might say, you know, what, I'm going to go to San Francisco finally. That kind of thing. That's the other thing too. Baker Mayfield could, had, would have Byron Leftwich as his offensive coordinator, who. I think is uh, like there's a there's a very good chance that he ends up as a head coach, uh, maybe of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers maybe. within one year. Maybe so. Uh, it, so that that might be the best fit too. Over two million construction jobs around the world are taking their projects to the next level, from roadways to railways, from skyscrapers to homes. Make your vision a reality. Build with Autodesk Construction Cloud. Try it free today at construction.autodesk.com. Hi, I'm Femi Redwood, the host of the podcast Beyond Black History Month. This week is all about baseball. From the Negro League. Money is something we never had. To black players in the major league. We all know that that needs to be improved. As the country celebrates the 75th anniversary of when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier, celebrate with us as we dive into baseball history. Look for Beyond Black History Month on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts.